Thanks everyone for being here today for uh, our seminar. We're going to have a very good conversation and our guest today is Eric Martin. He is the general manager of Reddit. And uh, we're going to talk a lot about Reddit today as well as how Reddit fits into the media ecosystem. Even though I don't like using the word ecosystem, it fits because there's all sorts of different parts of it and some parts of it are sort of growing and some parts of it are trying to regenerate. So we're going to talk about how Reddit fits into all that, how they have a relationship with media companies uh, sort of what media companies can learn from them. And we're going to throw it open to questions. So um, just to give you a little bit about Eric, he's been with Reddit for how long? Since the beginning or pretty close to the uh, beginning? Five years. Five years? Um, and uh, you studied at Tulane, correct? That's correct. See, I got all the questions right so far. Uh, so Reddit, for folks who don't know, we're going to talk a little bit more about it. Uh, the site likes to say it's the front page of the internet. And there's odds are that Anything that you might have gotten emailed during the day, whether it's an article or a video, uh, an animated GIF, animated GIF, depending on how you say it, um, at some point may have been on Reddit, and you may not have known that. Uh, it's a place that just sees a lot of information passing through it. On, uh, it's a place that we could probably learn a lot from uh, for our different media companies. Uh, according to a recent New York Times magazine story, Reddit sees about 5 billion page views a month and has 70 million unique visitors. Uh, that is, a, that is a, a fire hose of traffic to send to various corners of the internet, which is something that a lot of media companies are interested in, again, as their stories wind up there. Um, it's a place that uh, a lot of people use for different, for different uh, reasons. I personally use it to look at things about discussions about screenwriting and TV and cars. Uh, you can also use it for news. You know, there's a Boston subreddit where the other day I saw that after the uh, bus driver strike that uh, Uber, the car service company, was offering free rides to people, which I did not see anyplace else. So serves a lot of different needs. Um, but enough about me and my yammering. I'm going to turn it over to Eric, who's going to uh, tell us a little bit more. Um, yeah, thanks, thanks for having me here. Uh, so. Um, Every morning, like the first thing I do when I wake up um, as I'm having coffee is I go on Reddit, um, which we're going to do now here, and go away, notification. Um, I hit this little button up here called random. A lot of people don't know about it, but it will take you to different subreddits, a random subreddit. Um, this subreddit, bitch I'm a bus, um, it's basically videos of buses running over things. Um, <laughs> When a bus fights another vehicle or an inanimate object, usually the bus wins. That's, um, that's one subreddit. Um, and, I, and I just kind of click it until I sort of wake up or I see something I hadn't seen before. There's ukulele. Um, you see they've, they've added a little, this is our mascot, Snoo is its name. An alien from another dimension. Uh, the Snoo has a ukulele. They've sort of customized, they have some rules over here, they have links to other ukulele resources. Um, they're doing work in progress Wednesday, so they have an editorial calendar in their ukulele community, um, so on. So yeah, just kind of hit this. Um, so there are, so Reddit is basically, oh, I love this one. Um, Reddit is, think about it, if you're not familiar with it, it's like a giant message board and you can create sort of categories or rooms, or we call them subreddits, about anything you want. And anyone can create these. So we have over 100,000 subreddits that are, that are, you know, get a post or a vote a day. And we have about 6,000 that get uh, more than five comments per day. So there's 6,000 subreddits um, that have, that we consider like very active. Um, everything on Reddit is user created. So a user has this subreddit is called what is this plant or what's this plant. Um, so people will post pictures of plants they cannot identify and then other people will help them identify them. There, we also have what's this bug, what's this bird. There's a whole sort of category of what is this thing. Um, but everything you see here, this logo, the colors, the sort of descriptions, um, this, I guess they get a lot of questions about poison ivy and poison oak. Um, poison ivy has the jagged leaves, poison oak has the round leaves. Um, they put that here. So this is all done by users. Um, everything on the site uh, is voted up and down by users. So um, 
This here is a, uh, this is what's called a self post. So this is not uh, linking anywhere out. It's just someone has posted text. Um, about a third of the content on Reddit is text posts. So Reddit, Reddit, when it started in 2005, was just links. Nothing but links to articles, videos, images, whatever. Um, and then we added the ability to make text posts, and those are now about a third of our content. So for link aggregator, a third of our links aren't going out, they're, they're text. So people will write, you know, here they're asking people to vote on what uh, you want to see in the most common plants list. Other places they could be telling you a recipe for gluten-free baking, which is really difficult. Or they could be, um, you know, asking about a specific problem with a printer driver or, you know, a rant about something, you know, a politician did. Could be anything. Um, so we're going to hit random a couple more times here. Skyrim is for a video game. So there's subreddits for every video game, every school, every sports team, every subject you would find in a university. Um, this is sex positive. This is a sexuality community. Um, you can see here in the link on the sidebar, these are all related sort of subreddits. So this is self-organized. The, the moderators of this subreddit have have linked to other subreddits that are relevant or they think are good. Um, again, this is all done by users. Cover songs. So this subreddit, they have, um, they've sort of, uh, it appears to be they have a rule. You can only link to videos in this particular subreddit. Again, users made that rule, not me or anyone working at Reddit. Um, you can click, open the YouTube video and watch Someone covering a song while surfing. Cool. There you go. This is a subreddit just for beagles. You can see they've done this um, beagle alien version. And they didn't make their background transparent. It kind of looks weird. But oh, it's howling if you hover. There you go. Great. Lifting music. Music to lift weights to, obviously. Um, I had not seen that before. so. Um, it's always sunny in Philadelphia. Again, the users created this. Users created this one. I guarantee you EA Sports has nothing to do with this subreddit. Um, this is another video game. Battle stations. This is uh, people that post pictures of their uh, desks. <laughs> so if you're, if you're a programmer or engineer, you'll often hear people refer to their desks and computer setups as their battle stations. So makes it sound much cooler than their work pods or something. So, cool. Well, it's, uh, I think that, so you get an idea. I mean, the, the users have totally customized all the different subreddits. Some of them are very different. Some of them are just videos. Some of them are very serious. Some of them are totally ridiculous and absurd. Some of them are, um, have a lot of different rules and kind of things in the sidebar. Some look like sort of the front page of Reddit when you, when you, when you go to it. So it's a, a, a wide breadth of different uh, sort of communities. Um. So, oh, hey. Uh, I guess I don't have to project as much. Um, so I guess to start off with, tell us a little bit how you wound up with Reddit. I think we uh, would be interested to find out um, what brought you there and what it's been like to see the company grow in the last five years. Yeah, so I, I was originally at, at a school, or during school, and then out of school I worked for a record label. Um, I worked for a record label called Mammoth Records, um, had a band called Squirrel Nut Zippers, Seven Mary Three, and a bunch of other bands that no one's ever heard of. Um, they got bought by Disney, um, and yeah, that was, that was great. Um, after that I got involved into filmmaking, so I was actually a documentary filmmaker for a while, um, and was, you know, shooting and editing and, and producing, um, and then got into kind of marketing films um, and distributing them online because no one else would, um, and marketing them because no one else was going to. Um, so I kind of got involved in that world. Um, I moved up to New York um, to work for a company called Palm Pictures, um, which was uh, this sort of film and music kind of new hybrid company that Chris Blackwell, who started Island Records, kind of created in the, in the late 90s. Um, and at about the same time, I also applied, or so I, I read this amazing book called Hackers and Painters 
um, written by Paul Graham. It's a really great book, totally holds up, very relevant. It was written, I don't know, 2004 maybe, um, about how hackers, programmers, engineers, and you know, artists, painters are very similar. They're, they're creating something. And that they're sort of inherently different than people who are not, you know, people who are creating something are different than people who don't create something sort of in their workflow and, and the way their mind works and, and, and what they need to do their best stuff. Um, and I don't know, that book had a really big impact on me and I started reading Paul Graham's blog um, or a series of essays published sporadically. Um, and one day he had an essay about this uh, company Y Combinator. It was sort of this incubator type thing he was starting. And the basic premise was that um, you would come to Boston or uh, uh, Medford, I think, to be precise, and you would live in a house over the course of the summer, and they would give you like ten thousand dollars, and you would start a company, and then after three months, you would either go on and keep, you know, sort of building the company, or you would go back and get a day job. Um, and I thought this was really um, an amazing concept, and I, I sort of worked with some dot coms during you know like ninety nine two thousand, the first sort of dot com. Um, uh, bubble, and I thought this, I don't know, this approach w was new and interesting, and I actually applied to do a documentary about Y Combinator, um, and they rejected me, <laughs> um, which was probably smart, because um, documentaries about sort of programmers talking is probably would not have been that interesting, but, mm -hmm. but anyway, I was kind of hooked. I like, I like uh, you know, sort of into what they were doing, and I was really curious what would happen, even though they rejected me. Um, and so they uh, you know, kind of followed along with, with Y Combinator and Reddit was one of the companies that came out of this first round. Uh, y Combinator has gone on to help start Dropbox and Airbnb and a bunch of other like, big companies. Um, but uh, from when I first saw Reddit, I was just like hooked. It's this just amazing site and um, you know, it was just kind of links and you know, later comments and it, very minimal looking, but you didn't know what was going to be on there the next day. Like everything else, every magazine we read, every you know website we go to, every TV show in general, um, every you know band we listen to, you kind of know what you're going to get. And here came this site Reddit where you didn't know what was going to be on there the next day, and you kind of didn't know where a, you know every link was a rabbit hole that you might go down. And so I was just hooked, and I found myself spending like a lot of time at my day job on Reddit. Um, and I got to know the co-founders, Alexis and Steve, and I just said, I want to figure out a way to work for Reddit because that's what I'm doing with all my time. <laughs> and they, um, I actually, I, I quit my, my job and was consulting independent films and documentary films and, and stuff on online marketing and distribution deals. And um, uh, Alexis asked me to work on a um, pilot that WETA, the PBS station in DC, was doing for a current affairs news show that was going to incorporate Reddit. And so I went down to DC for a summer and I worked on that and it was horrible. It, I don't know, it just didn't work. Um, and the sort of internet part of it was, I, I learned very quickly the internet part of it was sort of a gimmick they used to, not a gimmick, but it, but it wasn't core to the show, it was just sort of an add-on and uh, especially when you're making a pilot, the, the sort of add-ons get get forgotten about. So um, the show did not get greenlit, um, but I kind of got to work with Reddit more, and then after that, they offered me a job as community manager, um, which I had no idea what it was, but I accepted because uh, I just loved the site, and that was five years ago, and um, yeah. So with the title of community manager, and obviously Reddit being like a, uh, a universe of communities, basically. It's like a small town with a small town and a small town and another small town, uh, or maybe it's a big city. And other, it's, there's a lot of ge geography involved. Yeah, yeah. Um, what does that mean to be a community manager? Because obviously you can't be everywhere and dealing with everything, and, and Reddit relies a lot basically on the crowd to, to you know, not just police themselves, but to be its own community. So what is what I mean, uh, on one hand, it was sort of like, uh, you know, community. I, I kind of looked at it 
you know, because I sort of grew up in the music business, I looked at it like the manager of a band, right? Like, my job is to sort of promote them. So there was a lot of stuff early on as community manager that where, you know, I would see or someone else in the company would see something organically happening on the site that was really cool and we thought more people should know about. And, um, and so we promote it internally, we promote it externally, we sort of just kind of add some fuel to it. We do a blog post about it or run some free house ads about it or whatever. Um, and then, you know, there's another part where it was like, okay, it's my job to make sure the band doesn't self-destruct um, and make sure the band doesn't, you know, uh, fight with each other too much. Um, and so I would sort of, you know, try to just, yeah, keep things functioning, keep things working. If people had a problem, I'd try to help them figure it out as best I could. Um, and then also, you know, to kind of make sure the band doesn't get taken advantage of. Um, so, uh, you know, that was sort of like being the, the you know, uh, uh, sort of defender or voice of the community when, you know, people wouldn't link back to us or when, um, you know, I don't know, people would do things and, and not give Reddit credit. I was in there saying like, hey, don't forget about my band. They, they wrote that song. Um, so at any so point did you have to put flyers up around town or anything mm -hmm. like that? No, but there's a lot. I mean, uh, Alexis and Steve did actually put stickers and, and flyers up around, <laughs> around Medford um, and maybe some graffiti. So that's, mm -hmm. that's out there. <laughs> um, well, tell us a little bit more about the, this community. I mean, I, I think we're all probably curious about how these things happen. I mean, if you create a subreddit about um, drinking a beer in the shower, I think I saw that somewhere, <laughs> or about, you know, I have an Italian Greyhound, so Italian Greyhounds, and then, you know, a crowd shows up. I mean, how, how does this happen? Have you guys sort of mapped out what takes place? I mean, no. We, we, I mean, we have some idea of when a subreddit starts to become popular. Um, and sometimes it's really obvious what hap you know, how some subreddit kind of becomes popular. But sometimes it's, it's we, we will go back and try to figure out, like, why did this, um, you know, why did this music genre suddenly take off on Reddit? I don't understand. Uh, and we, we won't be able to tell. It's sort of somehow in the, like, sort of messy patchwork and chaos of Reddit, it, that subreddit sort of attracts an audience. And maybe it's something they're doing as moderators and as the way they sort of framed the community that makes it sort of take off. Or maybe it's they just got lucky and someone linked to it from a popular outside entity, you know, a popular Twitter account or something, or a news article, or a top comment on a popular post on Reddit. Um, sometimes we just don't know. Um, but in general, you see, um, you know, the, the communities that really take off, it's the, the sort of pattern I see most often is that it's kind of clear, you know, if you visit that community, or even if you hear about it, you sort of know what you're gonna get. So one of our fastest growing subreddits uh, of all time is called Explain Like I'm Five. <laughs> right? So people come on and say, the debt crisis, explain like I'm five. And so everybody, even if you've never been to that subreddit, you basically know what you're going to get. You're going to get sort of complex things broken down into, into hopefully more understandable chunks. Right? Um, so that subreddit really took off. Um, our sort of crowdsourced Q&A, you know, this thing I am a, or ask me anything, again, you know, if you sort of see the subreddit ask me anything or hear about it, you, you kind of get it right away. So, so those subreddits, those sort of um, communities tend to, tend to be the ones that all of a sudden are exploding. Do you know anything more about how these communities, I guess, sort of stay together and, and perpetuate? Because we see often online, whether it's in online comment sections or uh, other venues online that you know you can create a community for a short period of time, but then it might disperse. And some of these, like you're talking about, have been around for a while. So I've, I'm, I'm sure there are people here who wonder if there's any, any lessons or any anything you can tell us about how these communities stay together. Yeah, I mean, I think the biggest thing that we've seen is is some of what I showed you at the beginning, like the customization. So if you so the way subreddits work is you know anyone comes on and they create a subreddit. So. Let's say there's not a subreddit for um, Italian Greyhounds. So you're like, so there should be. There should be, and there, there may be, I don't know. Um, but so you, you're like, ah, oh, there needs to be a subreddit for Italian Greyhounds, so you go and create one. You're now the like, supreme <coughs> dictator of that subreddit. Um, if you wanted to, you could, you could say you can only post in Italian. You know, the, 
Which would be problematic because I don't know Italian. Right, right. But it's the it's the true language of the of the Italian Greyhound, so you should only post in Italian. And and no one can you know people would probably complain to us about it, but we would say, well, you know, he created the subreddit. That's that's his decision if he wants to make it only in Italian. Um, you know, or you could you could make the background you know nothing but tiny cute Italian Greyhound pictures, and that's sort of your. Uh, Sort of responsibility and your prerogative as the as the creator and as the moderator. Um. So, with with as much freedom as the community and users have on on Reddit, they've created multitudes of subreddits, and um, that's something that's gotten the site in trouble from time to time. And you know, the sites with names like Creepshot and Jailbait and and other sort of things that are completely not safe for work and otherwise make you kind of question your faith in humanity. Um, but also kitten videos. Um, so I'm, but I'm wondering though, what is maybe the guiding principle there? Because for a lot of companies, you know, they would look at that and say, we have to have, you know, we have to have control over this and we can't, you know, we can't have people doing these things on our site. You know, we don't know. I guess it's, is, is this going to be a venue? Are we going to treat this like it's a VFW hall where we give people a space? Or is it going to be a democracy where we say everyone has a vote? I, I'm wondering sort of what the guiding principle you guys have is for the way the community should operate and, and what is allowable on Reddit. Sure. So, um, I mean, in general, our, our philosophy is, you know, it's a site that gets, uh, you know, whatever, 5 billion page views and we have 35 employees. Um, and you know, any site like that, you know, whether it's Wikipedia, Craigslist, Reddit, whatever else comes next, you, if you're going to function, you have to have, um, you know, you have to have some rules. You know, so the VFW, you can, you can have whatever you want there, but you can't you know, burn the building down. You can't you know, stab the staff. Like, <laughs> there's some rules, um, but the rules have to be sort of, you know, Relatively easy to define, relatively finite. You know, you can't have 500 pages of rules because no one's going to read them, and they have to be relatively um, self-enforceable, right? So um, that is is what we've done. So we have like six rules. Um, you know, we've added one or two throughout the year, but we try to keep the rules very um, sort of simple. So no spam, um, you know, you can't try to break the site, um, you can't interfere with the functioning of, of the site, you can't try to cheat, um, you can't have anything that's illegal. Um, you, we added a rule, you can't have material that sexualizes minors, um, and I'm forgetting one. But, you know, we, we try to have rules that, you know, if I, could, if I could make a rule that said, don't be a jerk, <laughs> I would absolutely do that, but you can't. Right? You would need a lot of addendums to don't. You would, you would need pages of addendums. You know, no one would agree in most of the cases, and it wouldn't be enforceable. So that's not a, that's not a valid rule to have. So we try to have rules that, uh, oh, no personal information. So you can't put personal information on the site. Um, and that, you know, that, uh, again, most, you know, most people will, will agree, okay, yeah, you can't put someone's home address uh, up on the Internet. So this sort of, that is something that's able to be sort of self-policed. So, you know, in general, that's, that's our philosophy. And there's tons of stuff on the site that we don't, you know, agree with or that we find horrid and, you know, offensive. But, um, you know, as a whole, the site works when we are able to kind of, as much as possible, be agnostic and, and let those sort of finite, simple rules handle um, sort of the activity and, and the policing of the site. Mm -hmm. But what's, I mean, and I've, we've got some questions to, to, that this actually touches on in regards to, to journalism, but I guess I'm, I'm wondering though what responsibility you guys feel you might have because if you, I guess in some ways this is maybe a, if you see a crime in progress question, and that might be going a little bit too far, but if, you know, if you're seeing people that are exercising bad behavior or, or subreddits that are, you know, like you said, offensive, um, even if you find it offensive, you're going to be hands off on that. So I'm wondering what kind of responsibility you feel if you see something that you, you yourself personally feel is wrong. Yeah, I mean, it, it, it's hard. Um, but, you know, we, 
what I find offensive and what someone else finds offensive from a different part of the world or a different political belief or whatever uh, is not going to be the same. And, and people don't come to Reddit because they think we have the best sort of, um, you know, th they come to Reddit for the platform, not for our individual um, or even collective sort of judgment on, on what is acceptable and what isn't. Um, also on Reddit, you, you know, context, because you have these communities um, that are user created, you have content that is often user created, and then you have all the context around the communities, um, you know, it becomes very subjective. So for example, one of the subreddits that we get complaints about all the time is pics of dead children, mm -hmm. right? Horrible, offensive, it's pictures of dead children. Okay, that's obviously very offensive, it's, it's done to provoke a response, but what if that subreddit was called um, child autopsy photos? And it was the same content, but it was more for a medical purpose. Or we have a subreddit called Morbid Reality. It's more of like, this is what, you know, sort of a lot of people, um, it's a more, it's again, very similar content, but it's a more sort of nuanced and, I don't know, uh, human response to this very shocking, provocative content. Um, but it's, it's the, some of the same things. There's dead children, you know, but it's, it's, it's in a war zone. There's dead children, but it's from disease. And people, or whatever, I mean, I don't go to that subreddit, but other people find that meaningful to look at sort of death, right? We have a subreddit about combat footage. Where there's horrible, horrible things that happen. But that's, you know, and it's GoPro videos from soldiers' helmets. Um, a lot of it is extremely, I don't even, beyond offensive. It's people being killed. Um, but is that, you know, and, and, and if you had that under a different, you know, you could imagine a, the exact same content, content, combat footage, under a different sort of subreddit or under a different topic that would be incredibly offensive, but it's the same content. Um, so again, it's, it's, it's once you start getting into, you know, what we either individually or collectively find offensive or too far, um, it gets very tricky. Well, in, in the last year, there's been um, a number of big news stories, and Reddit has always sort of, there's, news has been a part of Reddit for, for some time now. But it, it seems like in the last year, there's been three sort of major stories, uh, at least to me, that stuck out as sort of examples of Reddit and uh, the role of, of citizen journalism, and um, one being the movie theater shooting in Aurora, Colorado, uh, the other being the bombing at the Boston Marathon, and um, more recently, the um, shooting at the Navy Yard in Washington, D.C. Um, and those three events to me are interesting because it, it seems like they kind of, I mean, there's three, so that helps them line up very easily in my mind, but um, they kind of represent different things. Because the Aurora one, it, it, I just remember when that happened, it was because it was sort of late, it was late here, so right. obviously news outlets were, were trying to scram scramble to figure out what was happening. Um, and in that case, there was a lot of sort of what we would call first-person reporting that was taking place from Redditors. Um, in fact, I think there was a Redditor who was actually at the theater uh, who was injured during, during the shooting. Um, and with the Boston Marathon bombing, it was a different situation. There was people who were reporting things that, that were taking place in Boston, but there was also a lot of spread of the information that was circulating in other places and eventually misinformation. Um, and uh, the misidentification of uh, a student from Brown University as one of the suspects in the bombing. And in that case, I I'm wondering how those two incidents are different because with the Navy Yard shooting, um, very quickly someone created a subreddit about trying to sort of investigate what was happening and you guys decided to shut that one down. And so I'm wondering maybe what you have learned over these incidents about how people are trying to report these stories and sort of what role Reddit has to play. Um, well, first, I mean, I think the, the, those three situations, um, you know, just in, in general, the, the response was, was exactly the same um, in the community. It's the same thing that you would see offline. People were trying to figure out what was going on. They were telling their story if they were somehow involved or they used to live in the area, so they were sort of explaining, okay, this neighborhood's next to that neighborhood. And, you know, I know that movie theater, I used to work there, whatever. Um, they were making jokes, they were trying to sort of make light of a very serious situation, and they were, you know, speculating about all kinds of things. Um, and they were, yeah, trying to make sense of what was happening. 
Um, uh, and then later on, they were trying to sort of help in some way. Um, I think, yeah, with with uh, with Boston, um, you know, it was a little different because the uh, the you know whatever the the authorities came and wanted help from the public. So they said, hey, you know, if you have footage, if you have photos, you know, upload them, share them, send them to this email address, and sort of the um, that is what, uh, you know, the biggest threads on Reddit related to any sort of suspects or finding people was sharing those, that, you know, hotline or hotline email from the FBI. Um, there was another subreddit that was, that was created and, um, you know, where people were trying to identify the bombers and they were, they were kind of showing pictures from different angles and they were speculating wildly and circling individuals in crowd photos. And that subreddit got a lot of attention. Now, the, and, and, and the actual subreddit where um, this Brown student that you mentioned was, you know, unfortunately, you know, his name was posted. That was actually the Boston subreddit. So, it, what, you know, this name was posted not in this sort of incendiary, controversial subreddit. It was posted in the normal Boston subreddit where people talk about whatever, all kinds of stuff. Um, and it was removed. But it was removed, um, I think, after about an hour. And in that particular situation, that wasn't good enough, right? It had been up there for an hour. People tweeted it. People saw it. You know, the moderators in that subreddit did what they're supposed to do and what our rules require them to do. But it was too slow with all these people watching with this huge national crisis. Um, and that led to, you know, people being misidentified. That led to, you know, some really horrible consequences for that family. Um, so, you know, what did, I mean, I, I don't know, I don't, the idea of like, what did we learn? Like, I mean, one, we learned that like people, um, you know, that people sort of want to share, they want to talk, they want to, you know, help, they want to be a part of these, you know, huge events in any way they can. Um, we learned that, uh, you know, people can be sort of callous and, and cavalier when they're, when they're, you know, mentioning someone else's name. Um, most people, the vast majority of people weren't. The vast majority of people on Reddit and elsewhere on the internet were very careful and very um, thoughtful with, with, you know, spreading information. But enough people were sort of careless in, in spreading information and retweeting things and uploading things and reposting things that, you know, actual damage was, was done. Um, and so that's, I don't know if that's something we learned, but it's definitely something we witnessed. Um, the incident with, in the Navy Yard, I think, is that's it's sort of not like the other two situations. Um, that subreddit was actually, I think. Was it a joke? It was a joke, one. It had, that subreddit had five posts in it and like six comments. And half of those were actually from journalists who were sort of in on the joke. And it was sort of satirizing what had happened on Reddit in the Boston bombing. And that subreddit maybe got a thousand views before we shut it down because it was, it was sort of purposely going against our policies in the sidebar. So we shut it down after like an hour when we when it first came to our attention. And then like a hundred stories were written about like, oh, we've learned our lesson. <laughs> it's like okay, well. But at, but at the same time, you issued an apology after after the Boston situation. Absolutely. I mean, look, the the there, you know, I think the circumstances and what happened on our end with with. Boston are much more complicated than, than, than just like, oh, we made this decision correctly or incorrectly. But we, you know, we've always sort of issued more of a, of a, of a follow-up, of a post-mortem. Like, we do it when our servers crash. We do it when, you know, something awesome happens on the site. You know, when President Obama came on, you know, we did a follow-up and said, this is the traffic we got. This is why our site broke during part of it. This is, you know, et cetera. And so in this, you know, sort of big important incident, we, you know, we not all, you know, yes, we apologized, I apologized. Um, we talked about what, you know, could be done better, both, both by ourselves and sort of the community and, and the users on the internet at large. But, you know, we also talked about all the amazing things. We talked about people sending pizza to all the first, to the, you know, the police stations and the uh, EMS stations. We talked about people in Boston, um, you know, brought their pets out to one of the parks in case people needed a little bit of, you know, cute animal therapy. 
um, you know, so we talked about all of those things. But yes, absolutely apologized, and and you know, we we could have done better. Like it 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 you know, we could have done better. That was that's the bottom line, and mm -hmm. that's that's something we've always you know, we're an open source site code wise, like, and we try to be open source sort of policy and 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 management-wise as well. And so we will always sort of follow up anything big with this is what happened from our perspective. I guess, is it enough to, to do a post-mortem like that in a breaking news story? Because there was a lot of misinformation that was going on then. And obviously, um, there was a lot of news, not a lot of newspapers, but there were a number of news organizations that got names wrong, um, basically misidentified the bombers. And in journalism, you know, we issue corrections, you know, things like that. Um, and would, would that work for Reddit? I mean, just to sort of issue a correction or, or something like that? I mean, it, is there a way to, to clarify these things, or is it really up to the community to be able to sort of self-correct when something like that happens? I mean, I, I, don't, I don't know what, one, I don't think there's any self, right? I mean, there, you're talking about you know, millions of users in thousands of communities, um, and the idea that there's some sort of, you know, uh, correction is, I, I, I mean, I, I don't think that's sort of the way it works. Um, I, I, as far as, um, you know, updating information and things like that, some, some users, some, some moderators, some subreddits do that really well, and others don't do it as well. Um, we, again, we have certain rules, like you can't post personal information um, that, that come into play with, with things like real names um, that, you know, okay, in the case of Boston, those rules were followed, but they weren't followed fast enough or, or um, you know, so we need to update how those kind of rules are enforced. Um, but as far as correction, I mean, we're not, we're a platform. We're, you know, we're like Twitter or, or, or YouTube or... Uh, WordPress, you know, we're not sort of, com we're not, we don't have a position on the veracity of one thing or another. Um, we're a place where people can create communities, they can post stuff, they can discuss them, they can vote them up or down. So, um, yeah, as, as human beings, I hope people learn to be more empathetic. I hope people learn to be more sort of involved in their, in their world and, and through, you know, something like what happened in Boston, they learned that, you know, things you say online have, have, Repercussions have have consequences, but I, I don't think it's like a the same way a a, a, a publication or a editorial team would would correct something. Mm -hmm. um, I'm wondering about um, how you guys see the role of of news and journalism on Reddit because it's it's not just in these stories, but also you know we see these things on a daily basis. Like you said, people are reporting about what's going on in their community. Um, and I'm curious what your, what your ideas or your opinions are on that, sort of why people are doing this sort of self-reporting on where they are and what's going on around them. Um, I mean, I think, yeah, because they want to be, they want to be part of the, they want to be part of the story. They want to sort of, you know, um, they don't want to be passive to what's happening in the world. I mean, you now have a generation of people that, they are sort of creating their own pop culture, right? Even if it's just uploading this meme versus that meme. Well, that's a lot less passive than just watching whatever the network's put on TV, right? They, they, are, they have seen sort of, whether it's a political movement, like, you know, whatever, what happened with SOPA and, and PIPA, or the Restore the Fourth NSA protests, or, you know, any smaller thing, or whether it's a, a meme about a you know a two otters holding hands like they they've seen something start and then get big and and sometimes in a single day and they've been there when that's happened and maybe they've voted and been a part of it maybe they've commented and been a part of it or maybe they've just sat and watched it and be like oh I was there when that before that you know before that combination of text and image made this thing that's now seen all over the world like and and so of course they're going to want to sort of share what's happening in their neighborhood or share their thoughts. I mean, I hope they they want to share their thoughts on what's happening with their government. Um, and, and you know, they're voting, people on Reddit vote 20 million times a, uh, a day. So as far as, as far as journalism, like, yeah, I think people, I mean, I think that's sort of uh, a natural 
um, inherent human thing. It's just now we have this technology that makes it easier for more people to do it. I'm curious what uh, what you would say the relationship is with Reddit and we use capital letters of the media or, or maybe journalists. Um, and I ask that because we see this thing now where comp where organizations like Reddit and Twitter and Facebook have this sort of push and pull where you know people can share things on Reddit or Facebook and Twitter that are produced by these media companies, um, and then in turn traffic can come back to all these these, these different outlets. And um, so, what's what's the nature of that relationship? Because it seems like the two need each other right now. I, absolutely. I mean, I I think. Um, you know, again, we try to be agnostic in terms of, um, you know, what what publication you're linking to, or even what image host you're linking to, or what video host, or, you know, again, what a subreddit will and won't allow. Um, but, you know, I think, uh, you know, sort of original reporting and journalism is more important um, than ever because, you know, the the because it can it can sort of find an audience. Um, people can can uh, you know kind of add add new context. They can bring up an article from five years ago that because of something going on is now relevant. Um, but I uh, you know as far as the relationship, I think unfortunately most the relationship is mostly you know Reddit um, and some of the other sites send traffic um, and most. You know, most people doing, you know, journalism barely get involved in comments on their own site. Um, some of them are active on Twitter, some aren't. You know, some do it well. But, but I, I think, um, I don't necessarily think what's happening on Reddit, whatever you want to call that, and then what's happening in the, the publications and in the, you know, capital M media is, is different. I think they sort of happen to be in different hemispheres right now. But I think ultimately, uh, you know, it's it, it's the same thing, and and there's, I mean, um, I hope there's more sort of, um, you know, people who are doing reporting are going to be active in a comment thread on Reddit or a comment thread on you know whatever other site, or they're going to be you know active in comments on their own site, um, and they're going to be updating things, they're going to be finding new stories, they're going to be finding sources, they're going to be getting perspective, they're going to be whatever. Um, using this connection to their audience that we haven't had before, but uh, I think right now in 2013, the the audience and and the the sort of media are still separate. But I hope that they are becoming less separate. Well, I, I mean, I, I guess I guess I would say that in some ways, though, Reddit, you guys are creating content and something that is comparable to what a lot of media companies do, as you said before, the Ask Me Anything's, which have become very popular. Um, they're essentially like Q and A's. I don't know if everybody's seen them or not, but Ask Me Anything is where anybody can come in, whether it's the President of the United States, or if it's Joss Whedon, or uh, you know, it could be a Formula One driver. It could be anybody. Uh, basically, they have to provide like proof of life, essentially, like a picture of them typing. And I mean, it's, it's a lot like what we see with Q and A's, except for it can go on and it can be a lot more in depth. And so. I mean, that, that to me seems like that's comparable to what a media company does. You guys are producing this content that is very much like a Q and A. Yeah, and I mean, you have you have uh, you know uh, in our various uh, cooking or fitness sections, you have people who are sort of sharing their you know workout routine or sharing their recipe or whatever. That's that's very similar to what you would find in in sort of publications that that are in that genre. Um, so again, yeah, I, I don't mean I don't. I don't think it's inherently different. Mm -hmm. It's just, um, you know, the stuff on Reddit kind of comes more from the audience hemisphere. Um, but ultimately, I think it's the same thing. It's it's communicating. It's storytelling. It's it's, you know, all of those all of those things that that um, we as human beings want to do. Well, um, we've just a little bit more time before I'm going to turn it over to the audience questions, but. Um, in talking about sort of similarities between Reddit and media, um, one question for both is how do you make money? Mm -hmm. um, and specifically, I know that you guys have advertising and you have the Reddit Gold um, memberships. Tell us about how you guys make money now, how you would like to do it in the future, what kind of challenges you face. Sure. So, I mean, the, the most important thing 
um, before I get into the specifics, is that we don't need to make a lot of money. Um, we're, you know, very lean and, and we don't spend a lot of money. You know, we have 35 employees and, you know, we, like our office in New York is in this co-working space, right? So that, that, that's good because it means we don't need to make a lot. It's important. Um, and, you know, we basically have ads that you would see, you know, on other sites for big movies, big, you know, the new uh, mobile phone, the new video game, et cetera, sort of big mainstream ads. Um, we also have ads from, you know, that are uh, from mom and pop companies that are, you know, two guys who made an iPhone app and they have a hundred bucks to promote it. So we, we both have ads for giant companies that are promoting giant companies and we have ads for people who have never bought an ad before. Um, you know, very similar to, you know, sort of you would see in, in uh, you know, newspapers with, with sort of classifieds and then bigger ads. Um, and then we also have Reddit Gold, which is sort of a premium membership. Uh, it's $3.99 a month, $24.99 a year, and basically you get some extra features, but most people do it to support the site. Most people do it because they want to. Um, you get a trophy on your user page. Um, and, you know, that's, that's basic. We have, we have some e-commerce. We have a, uh, Reddit has a Secret Santa program called Reddit Gifts, where we have the world's largest Secret Santa exchange. So if you've ever done a Secret Santa with your coworkers or, you know, your circle at church or whatever, it's the same sort of thing, except we do it with like 70,000 people all around the world. And, and we've started an e-commerce sort of site, kind of like Etsy, I guess, to help, uh, help kind of help those exchanges and also to make money. So, um, but still, you know, sort of ads, ads are our main revenue source with the others kind of being more experimental. Um, well, lastly, so we, we were talking about this before we started today, um, but uh, Reddit was, uh, had been purchased by Condé Nast and was spun off as an independent company in, I believe, 2011. Um, and I'm wondering what you could talk about in terms of um, how the company is able to innovate and maybe what are the differences between being an independent organization and being a part of uh, an institution. Sure. Um, so yeah, Reddit was bought and was started in 2005, acquired by Conan S in 2006. Um, I joined in 2008, um, and basically through the through the period where Conan S, you know, sort of owned Reddit, it was it was neglected, um, for better and for worse. Like it was neglected in the sense that we'd be doubling in traffic, but we couldn't hire anyone because you know there was a company-wide freeze on employees, even though we were growing. Um, so that was frustrating, but we were also neglected in the sense that no one told us what to do, which was good. Uh, so, you know, uh, I, I don't know what would have happened in, in, in another scenario, but um, it worked somehow, um, not without difficulty, but it worked. Um, you know, when I first joined Reddit in 2008, there were four developers working for the entire sort of Condé Nast empire, and those were the four developers at Reddit. Um, that's very different now. They have a lot of developers and, and engineers working um, inside the company. But basically, you know, we were left alone. Um, there were certainly some frustrating things like hiring, probably the biggest one. Uh, you know, equity for, for employees was, was something that's very common in the tech startup space, but not very common in the publishing world. Right. So that made it tough to hire, you know, the people we needed to hire. Uh, so we were, we were sort of spun back out. Uh, and Advance, which owns Condé Nast and other things, um, is still our sort of majority shareholder, but um, it's a much better sort of situation and we are, you know, a completely independent company. Well, give me an example of maybe what you can do now that you weren't able to do then. I mean, obviously, like you said, hiring being one thing, but that's got to have some consequences in terms of what you guys wanted to build. I mean, if you're getting a lot of traffic, you've got to be able to do something with that. So what, what are you able to do now that you weren't able to do Sure. Then? So, I mean, it's more like what can we do now easily that would have been very difficult before. So before, like our, for one example, that's sort of mundane, but important, like our ad server, our ad ops, you know, the ads that were served on the site and sort of the sales process was done through Condé Nast, which has a great, you know, world-class ad operation, but it's a world-class ad operation for, you know, Wired and Vogue and, and the New Yorker and, and not for this weird site where all you need is five bucks to run an ad. Um, and so the sort of ad serving technology and process that made sense for you know, the wired.coms and, and other 
entities didn't really make sense for us, and, and it was causing a lot of problems. And we wanted to go with, you know, our number one priority for an ad server was they were really fast, which is like the 18th priority for, you know, the other part of the company. So, and that they, you know, were open source and things like that. So, you know, now that we're independent, it was very, uh, you know, it was basically just up to us to go and find the right ad serving company. And we found this company in North Carolina called AdZerk that was uh, serving ads for Stack, Stack Exchange and Stack Overflow that had amazingly fast ads. And the CEO was a programmer who wrote all the code. And we love them and they're great. And, and that was something we were able to make that decision sort of without having to involve anyone else. And that, you know, we probably could have made that happen um, before, but it would, have been, it would have been really difficult and we would have really had to sort of make it happen. Well, um, let's throw it open to questions from the crowd and um, following standard protocol, just make sure to introduce yourself before you start your question. Tim. Hi, I'm Jim Rogers. I'm a journalist that's been based in Nicaragua. Um, I'm curious, in the, in the amount of time that you've watched sort of the community grow and contribute material, are there any trends that you can note in the, the type of content that's being produced? Is it becoming more sophisticated, or is it sort of trending towards the absurd, or is it becoming more educational? Are, are there any trends there that, are, that you can note? I mean, I, I think sections of the, I mean, I think there's sections of the site that are, you know, educational. I, I don't know. I think all of those areas are taking off. I don't, it's like, I mean, in terms of Reddit, at least, it's becoming harder and harder to think about kind of overall trends because it's, the site's becoming more and more fractured and more and more sort of disparate each, 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 uh, you know, each day. Um, you know, there used to be kind of a more, uh, you know, the site used to be smaller, so you, you, you know, you would know about all the different sort of active subreddits because there were only so many. You know, in the same way you used to know like all the bands that were releasing records um, because there weren't that many of them and you'd know all of them. Um, but now there's, you know, there's just so many that I, you know, again, I, each day I find a new subreddit, um, you know, as sort of before I do anything else. And so it's, I don't know. I mean, I think, I think, um, you know, if I were to sort of speculate on overall patterns, I think people are really sort of excited and motivated by, again, the unexpected. So when they see something or find something that surprises them, um, that, is very meaningful, and, and they will talk about that and share that and spread that. Um, I think, uh, you know, you, you both have trends on, on kind of both ends of the, of the spectrum in that you have an audience um, that's increasingly very cynical, um, you know, especially in, in, in terms of politics and government and, and sort of the mechanisms of the world. But you also have an audience that's sort of increasingly uh, you know, curious and, or, or almost, uh, uh, you know, idealistic in a way. Um, and so those, even those are kind of two competing things. You, you see kind of patterns on, on both the sides of that. Um, and I think you definitely see trends where people are more connected across sort of, you know, national and geographic boundaries. Um, so it is more, I mean, I think it's always, there's always been that cross-pollination across, across sort of countries and cultures on, on Reddit, but it's, more common to see now. You know, if there's a there's a discussion about healthcare, the top you know sort of four comments are going to be from people in different countries and different healthcare systems, each saying why theirs is the best or the worst or whatever. Um, you know, and you see that sort of, sort of across Reddit, where you see people sort of chime in from from different uh, you know sort of parts of the world. Um, so I think, and and then I think you know it's it's you know, there's sort of, on, on the internet, there's always been the ability to have the serious next to the ridiculous. Um, and I think any remaining barriers or bulkheads to that are, are slowly being, you know, the last nubs of bulkheads are being whittled away. So it's, it's you know, it, it's more and more uh, acceptable to have or, or expected to have the ridiculous and the absurd or, or uh, serious next to each other. Do you know how often you guys create new subreddits? Or how often they are created, I should say? Um, I, I mean, I don't remember. We, we know that. <laughs> I, it can be looked up, but I don't remember. Hi, I'm Hassan Shah from BBC News. Um, given your apologies to the family of Brown University students and the fact that 
certain subreddits are bad, is it actually possible to remain, as you described, content agnostic and not take any kind of political opposition? I mean, no. It's not possible. We, we try to be as close to that as we can, um, but no, it, uh, it's not possible. I mean, we, we're not... We're not content agnostic towards spam. We're not content agnostic towards personal information. Um, so, you know, again, we, we sort of, you know, we try to pick those rules that have the most impact. Um, and that can be sort of self-policed. Um, and, you know, we may change those rules. We may, we may add ones here and there, but, um, you know, that's kind of, at least we believe that's the only way that the system works is, is with as, as kind of few rules as, as possible. But, but obviously there are some rules and we can't be completely agnostic. Um, how much does porn affect your work? Um, I don't know. I mean, in terms of subreddits um, that are safe for work, I think like 85% of the subreddits are safe for work. Now, that may they might not be safe for everyone's work, but but you know, it's sort of you know we don't have a lot of we basically have safe for work and not safe for work. So something like trees, which is our main marijuana subreddit, is considered not safe for work because sort of a you know reasonable person reasonable person could could. Uh, you know, would be worried that someone could be, you know, fired or get in trouble for looking at pictures of, you know, weed at work. So that's not safe for work. Um, so 85% of subreddits are safe for work. Now that means, um, uh, you know, there can be not safe for work content in a safe for work subreddit and it gets tagged and, and vice versa. In terms of porn, I would guess probably, you know, I don't know, 5 to 10%. Um, we definitely have huge porn subreddits. Um, we, you know, but they are, um, you know, kind of volume-wise, not you know, our biggest subreddits are, are the uh, you know, videos, Ask Reddit, I am a, uh, those type of things. Um, so we, you know, we uh, sort of take user privacy, that's sort of like a core tenet of Reddit, and our, you know, we basically comply with what we have to comply with legally. Um, and that's sort of spelled out in our, in our privacy policy. So if there's, a, if there's a subpoena or warrant or whatever, something signed by a judge or whatever the equivalent is, um, uh, you know, in, in a certain jurisdiction, then yes, we absolutely you know, you comply with that. Have you answer a warrant by a judge? Yeah, all, all the time. Um, not all the time. I mean, you, can, <laughs> you know, if you can, when I see when Google and other places publish their numbers, I'm like, oh my god, you know, thank goodness we don't have to deal with that sort of volume. But yes, there's there's um, cases where, um, and there's cases where, um, you know, if, if someone comes on Reddit and says they're gonna, you know, shoot up a school tomorrow, then you know, we'll be proactive in that situation. Um, uh, but I don't, I don't think we've ever been, as far as I know, we've not been sort of. There's never been a case like that where it's because of sort of content that may. You know that has some high correlation with an activity that law enforcement's trying to stop. Hi, Eric. So you know, I am a big fan of Reddit. I think it's immensely interesting as well as enjoyable. Um, I have two questions. Uh, you can pick, but you choose to answer only one. Okay, I don't want to take up too much time. First is whether you. It seems to me that over the past few years. Reddit has lost some of the attributes of the culture that it had, presumably because now it's gotten so big. So the sense of unity, we all know the same movies, playing the same games, they have roughly the same political and social uh, attitudes, and that's getting dispersed a bit. I wonder whether you see that and whether it matters and if you're thinking about doing anything about it or it's just what happens when you grow. And the second is, um, the IMA seem to me to be this, this remarkably wonderful and genuinely new journalistic form. They're Q&As, but they're Q&As done by a community that pursues questions in a way that journalists generally don't. 
And I'm wondering whether you can talk about that. So either one of those questions. Uh, those are, uh, I kind of want to answer them both. But um, I mean, so I'll answer the first one quick. Uh, so yes, I, I, I mean, I think there is a, a certain sense of, um, you know, kind of shared community that is being fractured. I, I do think you have, you know, it, it's almost like it's being replaced with sort of the community inside certain subreddits or certain sections of the site. So, you know, it's, it's maybe disappearing from Reddit as a whole, but it's still there. It's just sort of being migrated down the, the sort of whatever structure into, into other groups. Um, I think that just happens when something gets really big. Um, you know, the, the same way a city doesn't, you know, now you're, you're more loyal to your, to your neighborhood or your borough or whatever and, uh, um, as it grows. So um, as far as the AMAs, I mean, I think, um, yeah, it's, it's this, the, the exciting thing for me um, is to see the AMA format, you know, this ask, I am so-and-so, ask me anything. See that format move into other subreddits. Um, and that's something we will actively try to do. So, so you know, we, uh, you know, we would actually go and try to get, you know, mayoral candidates to do Ask Me Anythings in their local city subreddit. Um, or, you know, we, uh, right now we're trying to get old school hip hop artists to do AMAs in the hip hop head subreddit. Um, or, you know, we might make a push to get, you know, sci-fi authors to do it in that subreddit. And, and then, you know, after you kind of do a couple, then, then they start to sort of come in organically, which is the, the, the goal um, for it to happen without us. Um, but yeah, it's, I, I don't know, again, I think it goes back to that, that idea of so much of the uh, sort of the world being predictable. Um, if you watch an interview on, even on some of the really good, you know, even on, even on Charlie Rose, like, or whatever, pick your favorite uh, interview sort of show or, or format, like, even if they're really good, you kind of know what to expect. Um, with the Reddit AMAs, um, not only do you, you know, not only do you not know what sort of questions are going to be asked and sort of what, because there's, because you could answer a question with half a sentence, or you can answer a question with a five paragraph essay. Um, there's so many choices that are left to the sort of person being interviewed that they, it, it ends up taking these, these unexpected turns. But also, you know, if you look at the calendar of, you know, these people are gonna be doing AMAs on, on Tuesday, you know, June 19th, you don't even know which ones, I don't even know, I can't even guess accurately which ones are gonna be super popular. And yes, of course, if, if a Bill Gates or a Tom Hanks or a, or a, you know, Shaq or whoever comes on, yeah, they're probably going to be really popular. But, but there are, you know, if you look at the, go look at the top AMAs of the past week, and you'll see celebrity, person with a weird disease, person who's over 100, athlete, celebrity, you know, random person, subway driver, celebrity, you know, that no one's heard of, uh, that's in a, or whatever, actor that no one's heard of. Celebrity and then with way, weird disease? Yeah, and then way down the list, you'll see someone that's like a household name that would, for whatever reason that didn't take off. So it's like, you know, it's unpredictable even for, you know, people who are used to being the sort of cover story. Um, and as long as that is happening, um, and it's something, I've, you know, I've worried that that would stop happening as the AMAs became more popular, but still, I mean, you know, I, look at the top, top AMAs of last week. Like, we're still having a sort of, it's still not predictable you know, who's going to be the most popular one. And, and I think that's what's most compelling. Um, is that, you know, and also the person being interviewed doesn't know. Um, and, and after having, you know, been interviewed myself, um, I can only imagine what someone who basically gets interviewed, you know, you know multiple times a day on a press junket for, for whatever the thing is, that gets really boring and they start sort of going into, into you know, robot mode and sort of, uh, it's not interesting for them. And so I think, not for everyone, but for a lot of the people, when they, you know, when it's the, the sort of AMA format is more interesting or even maybe more fun for them than your standard, you know, sort of press interview. And I think that shows, not in all of them, but in a lot of them, in the really good ones. Um, so I have a two-part question too, but I'm only a medium-sized fan, so you don't have to have that much. <laughs> um, Oh, I'm sorry. I'm Susie Bailey here. I'm a TV and video producer. Um, so one thing that I 
uh, thing is interesting is that Tumblr did a lot of active outreach to media companies, partially because they had a former Newsweek employee on staff asking them to create Tumblrs. And I don't, you guys haven't really had a tradition of doing that on Reddit. You don't sort of go out and say, Newsweek, we'd like you to have a subreddit on Newsweek or New York Times. I'm curious if that's something you guys have thought about and if that's something you, you've rejected or if there's reasons for that. And the other question I had is slightly related, but um, a couple companies now who you sort of wouldn't expect have done editorial plays, like Tumblr has sort of the failed storyboard ex experiment, and Twitter has sort of quietly been hiring editorial staff. And um, is that something you're sort of watching or interested in? And why do you think they're doing that? Because I can't, I mean, they're not making any money, so I'm sort of curious what the idea behind that is, the philosophy you think. Um, yeah, so, so, yeah, the first question, so, that is correct. We have, we have sort of not encouraged companies to make their own subreddits. Um, a few reasons. One, it's, it's I think, you know, it's, it's really difficult. Um, it's really difficult for a, for a lot of reasons. Um, there are a few examples of, of companies that have done it really well. Uh, uh, one of the This Week in Tech podcasts, or, yeah, called uh, Tech News Today. So if you go to technewstoday.reddit.com, they have an amazing subreddit. Um, and they they invest a lot of time in it, and it's really great. And they throw to it on their podcast, and they source stories from it, and they basically don't use it to promote their content directly. You know, they don't say, "Here's our you know, here's our podcast from yesterday with with you know whoever." They say like, "Oh, we're going to be talking about this new Android release. You know, has anyone had any bugs? Or we're going to be talking about this story that came up in the news that and and link to a whatever article in." you know, whatever, Ars Technica or something. Um, and they've gotten to the point where now, like, there is an organic audience there without them having to sort of be a catalyst. Um, they also did something really interesting on the sort of spam side. They went and got, so we have this community uh, uh, on Reddit called Report the Spammers. And it's nothing, I mean, it's users who their most favorite thing in the world is to find spammers and catch them. And these people spend a lot of time. So they don't have jobs. I, I, no, I think some of them have very good jobs. Um, you know, uh, I, others I don't know. But yeah, they, they have a lot of time somehow. Um, and they are very good at catching spammers. And so this week in tech, they went and they asked one of those users, can you be a moderator on our subreddit? Because we're not interested in sort of direct, we don't want to promote, we want this to be a community. We don't want to use it as a way to get page views. So we're sort of, you know, we're, we're hiring the, and not that they hired or there was any money or anything, but they're sort of bringing the police to be the bouncer at the party, right? Like, we want it very clear from, from even like how we're moderating, this is not about spam and what most publications want to do on Reddit. Um, PBS has done a subreddit that they've, you know, ha done some good stuff on, but it's, it hasn't, you know, it's hard. It's, it's, um, you know, what, I don't know, I just think the way sort of subreddits are organized and what they're for, to have them around a publication, especially a publication that covers multiple topic areas, um, is difficult. Like, the This Week in Tech thing, I don't know if it worked, if it would have been like This Week in Tech Sports and Gaming. Like, I don't think that would have worked. Um, but you could sort of see a scenario where it was like a New York Times subreddit and people used it as sort of an informal, I am, you know what I mean, like ask me anything and one day it was Nick Kristoff, and the next day it was Tom Friedman. I mean, that would be really popular, I think. So Absolutely, and, and, and you, know, you know, whatever, Nick and, and a bunch of people at the Times have done Ask Me Anything. I think, like, everyone at Slate has done Ask Me Anything at some point. Um, you know, a, a lot of the other publications have, but to have their own sort of subreddit where they need to sort of, you know, be in there moderating both, both like actually doing moderation activities and sort of curating and, and cultivating what's in that subreddit, that's a lot of work. And, you know, it's, I, I don't know, it's, it's hard enough, I, from what I understand, getting, getting those types of people to participate in comments on their own site. Now wanting them to participate, you know, in a, in a community outside is, is, just doesn't happen, with, with some exceptions. Um, your second question, sorry. Oh, the, the editor, so yeah. <laughs> I, I don't exactly know, I mean, I know what, you know, in the very small baby steps we've done stuff like that. It's been to sort of prime the pump. It's like, so for example, I used to go and shoot video AMAs because when I would 
you know, whatever, call up a publicist and say, hey, can Adam Savage come to our website and spend two hours answering questions in text on this site that looks like it's from 1998? This publicist would say no. And so I was like, well, what if we show up with the camera and we get 30 minutes of his time and I ask him the top 10? It's like, okay, maybe. So we would have to go do that. Um, and then once it got to the point where it was happening organically and the Adam Savages or whoever would come and spend because they'd heard of Reddit and we were whatever, a certain size, uh, and they'd seen sort of ask me anything that were great, um, they would now come sort of even without us having to ask. Then we sort of stepped out because, um, which is good because I was, you know, it took forever to do the videos. And, and you were busy. And I was busy. And, 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 and that's the goal. So, so I don't know if that's, if we were to ever do something like that, it would be, okay, we're going to, we want to prime the pump in this one area. We want to start something going. Um, and then hopefully it'll get enough momentum where it ha takes a life of its own and people start, whatever, making videos or articles or whatever um, naturally. I, I don't know if that's the same for those other companies. But yeah, Quickly, what's up with the design? Have you guys wanted to do any changes? I mean, it's like, <laughs> you said it yourself. I didn't want to say no, it looks no, like it's no, from 1995, I mean, but I mean... You guys have the message board thing down. Just what what's going to happen with again, that? Again, like one look at look at those sites that have you know massive traffic and very few employees. It's Wikipedia, Craigslist, us. We know, all even, know about Craigslist, don't we? Uh, even you know uh, uh, Twitter, Google, um, you know very sort of minimal yet flexible platform, and and I think rich text works like text and links. I don't know. I don't know that we're going to improve that a, a lot. <laughs> like maybe a little bit. And and I, I don't know. Something something happens when you start trying to make things pretty. You know, you hire you hire designers, and then you I don't know. You have to update stuff, and and I don't know. Something in there happens where all of a sudden you need like ten times as many people, and then you need ten times as much money, and then you've got to sell ten times as many ads. Like something changes when you start really going away from that sort of rich text, minimal platform. But you can see some of the subreddits that users have customized because we were crazy enough to let them actually change the CSS on the site. And they're actually changing like what the upvotes and downvotes look like and what some of the links are and even you know the link to buy Reddit gold in, in certain subreddits gets changed. So that's like they're they're changing our buy button to whatever they want it to be, which is you know insane in, 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 if you were to sort of suggest that in like an MBA class. Like, oh yeah, let your users just change your point of sale. Like to whatever they want, um, but but you know it, it's allowed. Some subreddits are beautiful. The NFL subreddit changes their sort of look each week based on the marquee matchup. It looks amazing. Um, other subreddits uh, look horrible and eye gouging, and and you know are are hard to to, walk, to look at. Um, and it's allowed users to sort of experiment with with sort of the even the sort of UX of our of our site. But I don't I don't know. I don't think that. You know, especially now we've got a you've got a design for like multiple devices and you know people all over the world. Like, I don't think rich text is going anywhere because I think it's pretty. It works. It's pretty good. Uh, Amber. Yeah. So for a traditional news organization, the misidentification of the Boston bomber would have been a very expensive error. And I'm wondering what the courts have had to say about libel and slander in a world where you say, we don't own the content, we're the platform. So who owns the error from a legal perspective, and either in this country or others where you may have dealt with this question? Sure. So fortunately, in the United States, um, because of uh, Communications Decency Act, um, I think it might be mixing up my, my acts, but we, you know, as a platform, we are not um, responsible for the veracity of what people say. Right? We are a platform. People are responsible for their own words. Right? The same way, you know, if you're at a bar and someone starts you know, saying something, the bar isn't responsible for what they say. The person is responsible for what they say. Right? So that's, that's sort of, I mean, without that, we wouldn't exist. Um, in, you know, for example, in Canada, the libel laws are very different. And I don't know if Reddit could exist in Canada um, as a Canadian company. Maybe, but it'd be, it'd be more difficult. So as far as... I don't know. I mean, the, the human beings that write, the human beings that write the words are the ones that sort of own them. Um, legally speaking, they grant us a non-exclusive license to show it, to sort of broadcast it on the site. But that's it. It's, it's their words. It's not, um, you know, it's not our content. To the extent that you promulgate some 
rules and regulations, six maybe only, does that not on some level make you resp a responsible party? I mean, legally speaking, almost like the more you monitor, the more responsible you are, mm -hmm. um, which, gets, which gets tricky. Um, so I, I don't know. Um, I mean, no, we're not, I mean, we don't, you know, sort of, again, everything on the site is determined by, by user behavior. The, the sort of the position of things through, through voting, the creation of the subreddits, the, the, and the actual words that are, that are written are the things that are linked to. So, I mean, we are a platform for, you know, sort of communities and people discussing things. Um, we're not, you know, we're not a publication. We're not sort of, uh, you know, we don't have editorial control over what people say. I'm uh, Ravi Nesman from Associated Press. One very quick question, one a little bit longer. Do you have, of the 35 people on your staff, is one of them a lawyer? <laughs> no. No. So no. how do you deal with, um, like what Dina was asking, when you get, you know, relatively regularly, um, you know, the government demanding you know, turn over information, who vets that to you? Sure. So, uh, all the people, including myself, kind of on the community team, have had to learn far more than we ever wanted to learn about various laws and, and how to handle sort of legal requests. Um, but we also have very good lawyers that we um, that are also very expensive that we consult when when we need to, right? But we don't have any lawyers on staff. And my my broader question is, where what do you envision for the site in like five years? Um, I, I, the the honest answer is I don't know. Because the you know the users of the site have better ideas than I do or as than we at a company do, and all we try to do is sort of take ideas and, and things that they develop and give them fuel and help make them happen. And you know I, I can definitely like five years. Yeah, I can. I mean, I think internationalization. You know, Reddit spreading into more and more countries and sort of. All those countries talking together uh, uh, is coming. I think, you know, we are open source, and we have a lot of amazing programmers and engineers in our community. So people are going to start doing more and more interesting things, um, you know, especially for different devices or different different sort of platforms, with the, uh, you know, sort of data and the whatever curated content uh, that is on Reddit. Um, so I think people are going to start doing interesting things, you know. Um, Right now, if you look at the, uh, you know, the iOS or the Android marketplace, there's, you know, whatever, 20 Reddit apps in one and 50 Reddit apps in the other. In five years, I hope there's 1,000 Reddit apps in each one. And, and you know, some of them are going to suck. But there's going to be some that are using Reddit in a novel way that I, can't, I couldn't come up with today. Because uh, people are going to try things, and some of them are going to, you know, snowball and develop and, and go in a new direction. Um, you know, throughout, I, I never could have imagined that people would do, uh, that Reddit would be useful for live events. You know, we, this edit button that we have on self-text was created so you could fix a spelling error or a grammatical mistake. You know, in, the, in, the, in Aurora or Boston or, you know, a thread about the Euro 2012 or an eSports tournament, people are using this edit button like 50 and 60 times an hour to update things. That I never, we never, we didn't design it for that, and it doesn't work very well for that, but people make it work by, you know, sort of customizing things. People have created a site where it reorganizes Reddit comments in chronological order and feeds them in live. Um, and they do that because we let them, because we're open source and because we sort of don't send lawyers after them. Um, and so, you know, users have taken our site in directions we couldn't have imagined. And I, you know, if we are to evolve at all, and, and uh, you know, five years or ten years from now, it's going to be because people in the community um, take it, take it in those new directions. Um, you talked about funding from ads, but I wonder if you can talk about um, Reddit's relationship with venture capital, both in its early days and, and perhaps moving forward in the future. Sure. So. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm Allison McCabe from Okay. So. I believe the original sort of seed or angel investment from Y Combinator and Reddit was twenty thousand um, dollars, and then basically Reddit was self-sustaining until Condé Nast bought it in two thousand six. 
Uh, so it was like two people, and they, you know, lived in a lived Are in the apartment. The I don't believe so. Um, then uh, Reddit was under Conde Nast, and you know, sort of operated with a PNL as an entity under a bigger company, um, and so there was financing internally. Um, and then when Reddit was spun back out, there was sort of a new company was created, and that was capitalized. Um, Reddit also uh, had a very small sort of token angel round um, I don't know, in the last year or so, uh, but like we're talking like a million dollars total, so uh, very small. Um, yeah. Um, so I don't know. I mean, we we have again, we've never spent a lot of money, so we've never had to raise a lot. Um, that's you know, even in the Conde Nast years, we were you know very close to being break even. And we're very close now, so I don't know. I'm, I'm thankful that we've never had to go out and get real VC money and everything that comes with that. So we've got time for just maybe two more questions, which is great because there are two. Um, so you had, uh, oh, sorry, I'm grateful for the moment of blocking around. Um, you talked about Reddit's relationship with three uh, new events, three different um, shooting events, and you could argue that all those events were simultaneously broken by Yeah, I mean, I, as far as I know, I think the, uh, you know, the, uh, in Aurora, the, one of the first sort of reports on the story was from someone who was at the theater and said, I was in a movie theater and there was a shooting, I don't know what's going on, like that, wow. I'm paraphrasing, but it was like that, yeah. it was before there was sort of anything that was known, and then people added to that, and then later there was, you know, all kinds of other sort of eyewitness and, and sort of aggregated reporting. Um, I don't know. I mean, I don't worry a lot about if that counts as Reddit breaking it or not. I know, but um, I mean, I definitely think they're, you know, I think probably the biggest story that sort of where Reddit was involved in the story um, was probably the, you know, SOPA and PIPA blackouts and protests. Um, so in that case, you saw, um, you know, there were all these companies that were sort of in support of those bills. Um, and some Reddit user decided they were going to go after GoDaddy. And they were like, I, they posed this thing. I'm gonna, I've got 75 domains, and I'm moving them all tomorrow. You know, who's with me? And that worked somehow. And all these people started, uh, you know, moving their domains from GoDaddy, and even like some big companies started moving their domains. And GoDaddy flipped, and like took their name off the bill in, in a day or two. And that, you know, was kind of part of that snowball. Um, they also went after Paul Ryan, which, which sort of political friends of mine told me was a horrible idea because he's wasn't a sponsor of the bill, and I forget other sort of political reasons why it wouldn't make sense for to go after him, but whatever, they picked him, yeah. probably because they didn't know any better, and he ended up sort of changing his position, which kind of opened all these other doors. So, I mean, I, I, I don't, those are the things that come to mind, where, but I mean, Reddo's sort of, in a way, involved in that story. Um, <clears throat> I mean, I, you know, you, it happens all the time. So, for example, anytime a new Android release comes out or something like that, you see, you know, uh, you know, all kinds of reporters and, and just sort of people who are interested in that going to Reddit to see, like, okay, what, what's going to, what broke in this version, right? Yeah. Right. And and I also think, like, I, I don't know why more reporters don't go onto again the the, the sort of relevant sections of Reddit and say, yeah. like, okay, I'm doing a story on X, Y, and Z. Who's dealing with this? Even if it's like, okay, I'm interested in, you know, does anyone, you know, is anyone, you know, is there anyone in this section that's dealing with this disease because we're doing a story about a new, you know, I, I don't know, like, I, I th there may not be ways to do it in every sort of case, but I, in general, like, I, most of the time when I meet with publications, you know, which I do a lot, it's like, how can we get more traffic? Yeah. It's like, okay, well, you know, I can, I can give you some best practices and, and all that, but like, I I'm think that... Yeah, I think the bigger power, the bigger impact Reddit could have is in, in sort of 
finding finding stories, um, uh, or even you know like for some reason in the sports world you see you know sort of whether it's ESPN or someone else you see you know stories will get updated based on comments on Reddit. So they'll make a list of the top you know 90s playoff plays. And someone will point out that they clearly forgot this play from the Supersonics or something, and then they'll update it and say, "Like, thanks for everything." Yeah. But like that doesn't, you know, that that doesn't happen as much in other. I mean, it does happen, but I, I don't know why that doesn't happen more. Uh, I think a lot of first don't. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> James. Um, news organizations are, are trying to figure out how to use social media, engage with their audiences, to get stories, but also to keep keep readers engaged and I think to win new readers. And I'm just wondering if there's things that you guys have done at Reddit or innovations that you've seen elsewhere that you think traditional media could, could learn from. Um, I mean, I, I totally understand why, so Popular Science recently killed their comments. And I think in general, like, Comments don't, you don't have to have comments. Like if it's not important and you don't care about it, then get rid of it because it's just taking up, you know, resources and, and, and paid real estate. But if you decide to have comments, then you should, you know, give a darn about them and, and pay attention. And one of my favorite examples was, was Roger Ebert. So Roger Ebert's, you know, site, he was actually using like some early version of movable type. And if you go back and look at the comments, what he actually is doing is he's going in, so if you ask a question about what are the top Italian films from the 70s, he's actually going into the comment, your comment as an administrator and editing your comment to post his reply in bold below. That's horrible. <laughs> Don't do that. Like that's really bad and there's far better ways to do it, but it didn't matter, it worked because he took the time to go in there and reply. And no one got mad, it's like, oh my God, Roger Ebert's like basically taking over my account and posting things under my username because he would like write Roger Ebert after him, whatever, but like, it's not necessarily about the technology, it's just about like, do, you know, what are your priorities? Do you, are you responding, you know, to people in the comments? Are, you know, if you think it's accessible and think it's horrible, well, then get rid of it or, you know, do something about it. Like, I, I, I don't know, I mean, you know, I, I, I don't understand why, uh, a few things, why in general comments in 2013 are not all threaded and uh, votable and nested like they are on Reddit. You know, you still, most sites, if you go to the comments, they're still in reverse chronological order. Even though people are Facebooking them and voting them and replying to them, why, why are we not using the data that about to surface which comment um, is more interesting or more relevant other than just the data of what time it was posted? Um, also, most sites, like, they'll hide their comments like way down the page and you'll have to expand something and it'll take forever to load and it's like, you're, you're, you're clearly trying to hide them. Like, so like why have them at all if, if you're going to try to hide them? Like, and, and of course your, your sort of editors and writers aren't going in there because you're making it as difficult as possible for anyone to go in there. And so the only people who are going to get in there are the like really motivated, passionate, angry, or, or supportive you know, political people or whatever, right? The, you, you're making it, you, the barrier to entry for the normal, reasonable sort of people is, is too high. So you're only getting you know, both ends of the spectrum. So I, I yeah, I, that's my biggest thing is like people are coming to your site and they're responding and saying something. Like if you sort of ignore and, and orphan that, then I don't you know, I don't know. All right, well everybody let's thank Eric for joining us today.